does hitting the debt ceiling mean, and what does hitting it mean for those of us investing in things like T-bills and I-bonds? Yes? Can I please have some money, please? I need something to buy. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Back in the olden days, Congress had to approve each issuance of debt with a separate piece of legislation. Can I have some more money, please? There's something else I need to buy. <sighs> Here you go. Thank you. Now, where was I? As you can imagine, that would be extremely tedious and slow moving. So in 1917, the debt ceiling was first enacted. Basically, you can think of the debt ceiling like a parent giving a child a credit card with a fixed amount of money on it. What's the... Can I have your card, please? There's a lot of things I need to buy. <sighs> okay. Oh, thank you so much. Come on, ducky. It was Congress giving the Treasury the authority to issue debt to fund the government and things like Social Security and Medicare trust funds without having to go and get approval each time. The catch is Congress put a cap on the amount that the Treasury could freely issue. The debt ceiling. So what happens if the debt ceiling is hit? And once the Treasury hits the debt ceiling, it's no longer allowed to issue new debt. The treasury can enact what they call extraordinary measures, and incoming receipts from taxes would have to cover the tens of millions of dollars of daily debt obligations that come due from bonds reaching maturity. However, these extraordinary measures and tax revenue wouldn't be enough to keep things running forever because our government usually runs at a deficit. So the federal government would eventually run out of cash on hand, and at least temporarily, start to default on its debt obligations. Things like social security payments, salaries to federal employees, benefits for veterans and active military members, etc. The Treasury predicts they could currently run the government for about six more months before defaulting on any obligations became a serious issue. So how did we even get here in the first place? The debt ceiling was established in 1917, and since World War II, the debt ceiling has been modified and raised over 100 times. The last time it was raised, in 2021, it was raised enough to sustain federal borrowing until quarter one of 2023, which is where we are today. The reason that this is currently an issue is actually pretty simple. The President and the Senate are both controlled by the Democratic Party, and the Republican Party just regained control of the House of Representatives in the 2022 midterm elections. And having control of only one branch of government doesn't afford them the opportunity to do very much with their agenda without having to make major compromises to get the opposing party on board. So instead, they can use the debt ceiling as a bargaining chip to try and get the President and Senate Democrats to bend to their will on certain issues. Think of it like a star athlete refusing to play and holding out until his team offers him a more lucrative and better contract. Except in this case, it's just a bunch of politicians holding the functionality of the US government hostage until they get their way. But the question we're all really here for is, what happens to my T-bills and what happens to my I-bonds if both sides continue to play hardball and the government actually defaults? And if the government actually defaults, then yeah, your T-bills, your I-bonds, and any other treasury bonds you may be invested in would be essentially worthless. The government simply wouldn't have the cash flow to pay back all the principal and interest payments that it owes not only us, the lowly individual investor, but all of the mega funds and foreign governments that hold billions and billions of dollars in US treasuries. Do some reading on Argentina or the Greek debt crisis if you want to see how all that would play out. That seems really serious. What are the chances this is actually going to happen? First of all, the U.S. has never in its entire history. That's why U.S. Treasuries, T-bills, I-bonds, Treasury bonds are considered amongst the safest investments in the world. The closest the U.S. has actually ever come to defaulting on any of its debt came during the War of 1812, when, as you may remember, the Treasury and most of Washington, D.C. were literally burned to the ground. And even then, they never actually defaulted on any debt. And the second thing to remember is we've had this exact same fight a number of times in recent years. Sometimes it's even led to government shutdowns. 
but they always reach some form of agreement long before a default is an actual real serious threat. And if I were a betting man, and I kinda am because I'm still buying T-bills and I-bonds, I'd bet that this debt ceiling showdown, like all of the ones that have come before, will be resolved without even sniffing a default. Because come on, it's not like the people that are threatening to throw the US into default are the same ones that wanna cut off its largest revenue stream and abolish the department in charge of collecting that revenue, right? Now, I've gotta go find where my credit card went. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Bye!